our first speaker for the day. And there can be no one better than Dr. Miriam Villela to help us to recognize our ethical responsibility towards not only the Himalayan ecosystem, but to all ecosystems. From the 1990s, Miriam Villela has been championing the, a worldview of care and responsibility towards our ecosystems and democratic systems. She worked closely with Dr. Morris Strong, former UN Secretary General, as well as many distinguished champions of the environment in their efforts on environment that have resulted in many environmental organizations and initiatives across the world today. She leads the Earth Charter International's initiatives to build a global movement of ethical action and leadership. Miriam Villela, I'm honored to invite my dear friend to take the floor. Miriam Villela, the floor is yours. Thank you, Anupan, and hello, everyone. I send you greetings from Costa Rica, where I am early in the morning, and start by saying happy environment day, happy, happy world environmental day. And when we enter this day, I often think uh, about those who tell, often tell me, I'm not an environmentalist. I'm so happy that you're working on it. And what comes to my mind is that everybody breathes and it's the air we, we have to breathe every day. Everyone eats every day, normally. We eat, so the air we have, the food we have, the water we drink every day is it, something that it's part of our daily life as humans. Um, and therefore, I really ask myself, why do people say they are not environmentalists? Uh, I think it's really an issue of uh, eyesight and not seeing the relationship, our human nature relationship. How, how is that and how does that ought to be? So I would like to, to start by inviting you all to reflect on our sense of community. What are the communities we belong to? Do we have a sense of belonging to the earth community? And uh, I think being part of a community requires a, um, a close sense of intimacy, empathy, uh, relationship, requires us to think about the relationships we have in that community. And it requires us really to think about what does a community mean, um, and which communities do we belong to, and how we ought to relate inside that community. And I'm saying that I would like to start this World Environmental Day in this event by asking us to reflect about our sense of community because we belong to a nurse community. Uh, but sometimes we don't necessarily feel that we belong to that earth community. There is not necessarily a sense of connection, rather there is a sense of disconnection to our earth community and it has to do with the lenses we use um, so the question is what is our ethical responsibilities uh, with the well-being of the many communities that we belong to what is our ethical responsibilities to the well-being of our closest family to our to those members in the community we belong to in our culture, in our countries. But is all, the question is, what is our ethical responsibility with regards to the well-being of the Earth community? Meaning humans and non-humans, living beings, and the Earth itself. Do we have a sense that of belonging? Because belonging to a community means we have some maybe rights and responsibilities. And the Earth Charter invites us to, to think that we must decide to live with a sense of uh, universal responsibility, identifying ourselves with the whole Earth community, as well as with our local communities. Uh, the Earth Charter invites us to think that we must identify ourselves um, 
but also with a sense of uh, common but differentiated responsibility, meaning um, that with increased knowledge, the more I know, with increased power, the more power I have, I therefore have increased responsibility to care for the common good, increased responsibility with the well-being of the community that I belong to. So we don't necessarily have the same level of responsibility to care for the communities we belong to. It depends on the level of knowledge and power and capacity to address the well-being of all. So considering our ethical responsibilities with the well-being of the human family and the whole community of life and the planet itself means that we have to think of the kind of relationships that we are having uh, with our own selves, with other persons, not only those that belong to my own culture, but those who belong to the large human family culture, I would say, or the Earth community as humans. Think about the kinds of relationships that we are having with those in other cultures and, and the large living that we are part of. And therefore, I think when we, we it comes for the time for humans to think about um, how are we relating, it, it's really a question about the values that should be cultivated and nurtured um, through our education systems, through our meetings, our decision making, our institutions, and etc. So the Earth Charter um, is an initiative that is going on for over 20 five years, so about 25 years, at least the vision of the Earth Charter. And I would like to briefly share with you um, what is the, uh, the ethical guidelines that you can find in the Earth Charter. Um, just a second. Let me just briefly. So Professor Arnupan, uh, started in his intervention by sharing something about the importance of a compass. So a compass is basically an instrument to give us guidance when we are walking, uh, for instance, in the middle of a forest and we are lost, we need a compass to find where we are in the direction of where we want to go, where we want to go, where we, where we need to go. So the Rishara can be seen uh, as an ethical compass um, for this earth community that we belong to, as an ethical compass for our shared responsibility. Again, the purpose of a compass is to give us direction of where we are and where we, where we ought to go. And the, the vision, the world vision that you find articulated in the Earth Shadow really is an invitation for us to expand our consciousness with regards to uh, our sense of belonging, uh, meaning belonging to a nurse community. That, of course, is a sense of expanding uh, or inviting us to think uh, not only of the local community where we belong to, um, but also is not uh, is not disregarding the local community sense of belonging, but also in mainly to invite us to think about this universal responsibility. So the Rosh is organized uh, with a preamble in four parts. Um, and these four parts are organized in uh, 16 principles. And the ideas that you will find there, it starts with an idea of respect and care for the community of life, which re is really at the center of the vision of the Rosh Charter. Again, an invitation for us to, to, to expand our sense of uh, ethical responsibility to respect and care, not only for my family or my people, but care and respect for even uh, an ecosystem that is on the other side of the world, for instance, or people who are on the other side of the world. So it invites us to really think about the community of life. Um, pillar two of their shot articulates a vision of eco ecological integrity and it has four principles and a number of supporting principles uh, articulating that vision. Pillar four, um, of the Urshad articulates a notion of social and economic justice, and it ends with the whole notion of democracy, nonviolence, and peace. 
But the most important thing for us to, to see, to, to think when we look at it is, is at the core of their shot is really an ethic of care and respect for the community of life. It's kind of our human responsibility, but that all these parts and principles are very much interrelated, no? So it's kind of an invitation for us to see the world through an integrated approach, but also an invitation for us to think about our ethical responsibility with others. So just very briefly, each part of their charter has four principles. Some of them actually articulate, for instance, principle one, and actually the whole idea of their charter is a notion of our sense of interdependence of our life, our sense of interdependence in this earth community. So it's really an invitation for us to think about that. And the, all the four first principles of their charter or the first pillar, the, the ideas that are articulated in the first pillar is really uh, sort of the roots of the rest of this tree. You know, if you envision their charter as a tree with the roots, the trunks, the branches and the leaves, um, I would invite you to think about the far, uh, pillar one of their charter, the, four, four, the first four principles as the roots of the tree. Uh, pillar two uh, articulates the whole notion of ecological integrity that especially today or this uh, world environment uh, uh, they uh, articulates this this whole idea of uh, restoring our earth, earth ecosystems or the decade uh, that is being launched on restoring our ecosystems and it's also an idea that's strongly articulated in the whole uh, pillar two ecological integrity of their charter. Um, the whole notion of the importance of the well-being of, of humans, uh, I would say it's articulated in principle pillar three of the Earth Charter. And of course, pillar four, uh, the whole notion of how we relate in terms of uh, the communities we belong to. And just to end, uh, in the, I think it's also important for us to recognize sometimes the tensions, uh, the tensions between exercising freedom and the common good. Short-term objectives, we need to address something immediately with the long-term goals. And, and therefore, the conclusion part of their charter called the way forward, uh, there is this, this notion that, that we must recognize that there are some tensions sometimes in our process of making decisions and the choices we make. But in that tension of the, uh, the choices and and actions we make, we must uh, find ways to harmonize diversity with unity, the exercise of freedom with the common good, short-term objectives with long-term goals. So I think this articulates also something that is quite important in the Rishara is looking at this balance and recognition that sometimes we have to address this uh, choices uh, that re that involve tensions and dilemmas. However, the common good uh, and the long-term goals should prevail. Thank you very much.